Wake that ass up Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, indeed. Bomani Jones. Welcome back. While you get that seat and I got to sit over here in this joint, you know, y'all y'all are thrown out. Y'all are really minimizing <laughs> your guests with this whole strategy. No, we got another got. one coming. <laughs> I'm just saying. But, but how does that work when we have multiple guests? Like, and, and it, So who gets the throne? Well, it sounds like y'all just need a whole bunch of thrones. Like, I, I've seen this. Like, Colin Coward, he said that set up where his desk was up here and his guests would be sitting down that. there. LeBron always <laughs> sitting in the high chair on the shop. Everybody else sitting on the ground. You can't fool me. I see what this is. Well, Charlamagne bought the, the, the thrones. Okay. Oh, he, he bought man. the thrones. I, I thought because he was short. He wanted to be a little higher. That's the reason I thought, but you just never know. No, I just like the setup. I like how it looks on camera. That's all. Well, welcome, brother. That's Appreciate right. it, man. How you Season feeling? two of Game Theory, man. Yeah, man. How you feeling? Hey, man. We, I'm, you know, out here on the stroll, uh, selling these wares for everybody. Anybody mm -hmm. that want me to walk the stroll and look pretty, that's mm -hmm. the kind of like the trickiest part of it. But doing the show itself, man, it's been great. Word. Like this is, I mean, this is the thing that I always wanted to do, and now we get to do it, and we get to keep doing it. At least we get to keep doing it through this season. I don't mm -hmm. get to make decisions past that. But we got a lot to talk about today, so let's jump right in. Super Bowl this weekend, who you got and why? All right, I'm going with the Chiefs, and I don't know if the Chiefs are the better team, but I just can't pick against Mahomes, man. How's his leg, though? How's his foot? I mean, he got two of them. You know what I'm saying? Like, one of them might not be as good as the other one was, but he got two. Like, and I made this mistake the last time they had the Super Bowl. Like, I'm not picking them because they have Mahomes, because that got me in trouble when they lost to the Bucs. Mm -hmm. But I can't pick against him. Well, in that Super Bowl, you probably could have because of who they were playing. Well, Tom Brady. It wasn't about Tom Brady. It's when okay. I turned the TV on and saw they had all them backup offensive linemen, and immediately I was like, I'm going to be wrong on television tomorrow. Yeah. Like, sometimes you just look up the game, doesn't have to go. I just saw the dude at left tackle who got Cam Newton damn near killed in that Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. and I was just like, yep, oh, yep, sometimes you're wrong. Yeah. Now, now you did say Tom Brady. What, what are your thoughts on Brady uh, finally retiring? Dude, he's 46 years old. Like, I don't even understand what the he's dilemma still, is. He's still competing, you know. He's still competing. But so are the dudes that are hitting them in the kidneys. That's like right. this, this is just me personally. I would imagine at that age, I am 42, mm -hmm. and I know how much it can hurt just working out, just waking up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. This dude's out here getting <laughs> getting buy out by everybody, and it's like, yeah, you know, I think I might want to do this. No, 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 no. So I am amazed that he pulled it off for as long as he did, and I am glad that he walked away before it got to be terribly embarrassing because he was going to be out here next year. It was gonna be depressing for all of us. You think so? If, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What if he done went to San Francisco or something? He's still been looking depressing, man. Really? Like, everybody gets old. Like mm -hmm. I know he got all this stretching and his strawberry ice cream and everything else, but in the end, well, he can't eat strawberries. That's his thing. He does not eat strawberries. Everybody gets old, and I think guys like him and LeBron have fooled us into thinking that you can live forever. Nope. Everybody that thought they could go forever is gone one day too long, and right. we just sit there and cry. Well, we never saw. We had. We really never saw Brady have a decline. I just don't think he had the team around him this year. Yeah, and that's why it's good to get out ahead of that decline. <laughs> it's coming. It's like coming. no matter who you are, it's coming. Now you mentioned LeBron. Is LeBron the goat? Now he's about to pass the record oh, in the next couple of days. No, the conversation's coming no. back. No, why? No, because there's a dude named Jordan. Mm -hmm. I agree. That's I mean, that's and that's no insult to LeBron. But like I remember at one point, it's like 15 years ago when I was doing radio, and I would say LeBron James is the best player I ever saw. And I had this like whole clinical argument, like he does this better than Mike, he does this better than Mike, he does this better than Mike. And I could go through all of that. And then you go to YouTube and you're like, what the fuck was I talking about? <laughs> like like none of, none of this matters. There was that dude, and then there's everybody else. Like the last dance, which was so funny because it was so clear that Mike looked around and was like, these kids just think I'm about some shoes. I need to show them who they are. And then I watched it and was like, yo, great idea, Mike, because I don't see how they could watch this and think anything other than there's never been anything like this before. No insult to LeBron, you know, but I also think that part of the scoring record of what's important to him is he's still making that case, right? right? The, I have a case against Jordan. Assist and scoring and yeah, rebounds. Yeah, and I'm just here to tell you. I don't think he has a case, though. No, because hey, it's cool to be yourself, right? <laughs> like, you just got to realize <laughs> you're not going to convince us. Like the people who you have not convinced, it's over. That decision has been made. The ones that know you, cool. They're going to ride with you, and they're going to decide this is your program. Everybody else, nah, we made our call. I don't have Braun over Kobe, and I think it's wild. Oh, see, I think that's crazy. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you why. We always say Kobe's the closest thing to Jordan, right? Mm -hmm. And people don't want to give it to Kobe. I saw Stephen A. Smith say, I don't want to give it to Kobe because all he did was mimic Jordan. You know how good you got to be to mimic Michael Oh, no, Jones? no. I give him credit, but that's like saying that Shine is better than somebody because he's the closest thing to Biggie. Now, granted, I never Kobe, thought that. Now, granted, Kobe's a lot better 
than Sean was as a rapper, but mm-hmm. it's just like he reminds me of isn't quite enough. LeBron got too many victories. Like I know Kobe has the championships, but that run basically from 2010 to 2019 I don't, or 2018 I, when he's going to the finals mm-hmm. every year. Yeah, and the yeah. only thing that's constant is LeBron James. Y'all only do that with LeBron. When it comes to the Buffalo Bills, nobody say the Bills are one of the greatest football teams of all well, time because well, they went to the Super Bowl four times. But they didn't go to the Super Bowl eight times and they didn't win. They three. went four in the NFL. Right, right. But they didn't. But if they had won a couple along the way, we could talk about it. Like I'm an Atlanta Braves fan, right? I don't say they're the greatest baseball run ever just because they have 15 straight division championships or anything else. But LeBron being the constant between two franchises and a whole bunch of different ways to get this done. Nah, man, you, you can't. There's no shade that you can throw on what he put. I'm not throwing run. shade. I'm just saying we, we, he's the person that we, for whatever reason, we make a concession to when it comes to not winning. Yeah, that's fair. And when Kobe was missing the playoffs and out here the last four years mm-hmm. looking, you know, beat down and Stay everything else, we let him slide. Stay past his prime. Stay past his prime. That's right. But we, you cut him slack for it. Like, that's the thing about it. We cut Kobe a lot of slack I for don't a think lot so. of He things. was hurt. I think the one thing that Bron doesn't have that Kobe has, that Jordan has, is the will to win. There was just something different about Jordan when he was on the mm-hmm. court in those final minutes, you knew he wasn't going to lose this game. Right. Same thing with Kobe. Ron, not so much. See, I disagree. I think Kobe had the will to take shots. Every mm. time, like when we talk about the mama mentality stuff, like it's been it's been long enough now that we can have an honest reassessment of Kobe. Mm. And so the thing for me about that is every time you hear about Kobe and the drive and the passion and mm-hmm. everything else, it's all about one man. Kobe's thing is, I am going to get myself all the way right. And if the rest of y'all do it, we're going to be cool, right? What made Braun different than Kobe was, I can take Braun out here with four dudes that we get off of Fifth Avenue. Mm -hmm. And he'll be like, (laughs) buddy from the Sandlot, if you go stand over there and hold your glove up and just stand right there, the ball's going to come to you. That's what LeBron's got. What Kobe's got is, man, if y'all would just give me the ball and just (laughs) let me get these buckets, this will be our best chance. I don't see that as the will to win. I see that as the will to be the person who does the thing. But Jordan wasn't like that? Jordan, I think part of that's the North Carolina thing where every now and then you had to get a ball to somebody else mm-hmm. and then go figure it out. But Jordan had a better understanding of the team dynamics. Like, look, man, I'm not an only child, but I grew up kind of as an only child yeah, 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 yeah. playing basketball in a driveway. Mm-hmm. That's Kobe. Kobe yeah. got driveway game, right? He got all by himself moves, all that stuff where you imagine. You ain't got to think about nobody else. You shoot them crazy fallaways and everything else because you playing in the driveway by yourself. Yeah. And then he gets out with other people. And that was the whole thing with Kobe the whole way was like figuring out how to interact with other people. It was a human thing, but I also think it was a basketball thing. And I go with LeBron for that reason over that. Like when LeBron had that squad in 07, Kobe can't get that team to the finals in the East or either way, because that's not how Kobe gets down. Yeah. LeBron out here got Jeff McKinnis out here looking like something that he never could be. Yeah. Now Kyrie Irving. This, <laughs> what was, what was, that was a joke? That was funny. No, I just, I mean, that's <laughs> what I do. No, no, he just got traded to, to, to the Mavericks. What's your thoughts on, on Kyrie? Does that make that team better, worse, or it doesn't matter? I have no idea. And I don't think anybody. <laughs> I, don't think anybody I don't think anybody that's has the best any idea. For Kyrie. <laughs> no, no, but he's another dude that's in a similar place where his individual game is just so incredible. Like, Insane. He's the best ball handler ever. that I've ever seen. I agree. Not even close, mm-hmm. right? But. How many games he going to play? He got all kinds of reasons to not show up, not come to work. Now he's dealing with a dude who's not accustomed to giving the ball to anybody else. Neither one of them plays especially well off the ball. I'm with you. Um, But I don't, but with the Nets, I don't feel like they got better either. Like, this is the rare time I look at a trade and be like, oh, everybody wanted to do worse, huh? Huh. Ain't that so? (laughs) Because I told Kyrie, he was like, you know, the word was out that he might sit for the rest of the year if he doesn't get traded. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> you want that max deal, you're going to get right. out here and play because mm-hmm. that's all you can do to get this money. Is that the worst, uh, I, I should say, the, the worst letdown in NBA history? Ever. Ever. James Harden? Ever. Durant? Ever. Ever. Kyrie Irving? Ever. Ever. Doesn't make any sense. First of all, they play like a game and a half together, mm-hmm. like in some total. But no, ever. I can't think of anything else. Remember how we thought about that year the Lakers got Gary Payton and Carl Malone? Mm-hmm. And they were old. They were old. Mm-hmm. And we thought it was a letdown when they went to the finals. These dudes won a series. One single yeah. solitary mm-hmm. series. And now I'm just waiting to figure out when they're going to trade Kevin Durant. But what, do you do, what do you do with Kevin Durant? You're the Brooklyn Nets. and If you are Kevin Durant, where do you want to go? Well, I can't go where it's the best place for me to go. What's that, the Warriors? Should have never left. I don't blame him for leaving. Like, I didn't blame Kyrie for leaving Cleveland the same way I didn't blame Durant for leaving Golden State. I didn't blame Kyrie for leaving Cleveland because he left Cleveland at the same time that I left highly questionable to go do high noon. Mm -hmm. 
Highly Questionable is a very successful program. If I had wanted to do that for the rest of my life, we'd have been down there making easy money, living in Miami. But I needed more, right? Like it wasn't, I was, I had a very nice seat in somebody else's car. Mm -hmm. I wanted to drive a car. So sometimes you got to go drive a car, right? That's where Kyrie was when he left Cleveland. What if you're not a driver though? Well, he thought he was a driver. Yeah. <laughs> I personally believe that I was a driver, but I have to say that car I drove on high dude didn't quite stay on the road, right? right, right Luckily, right. I got another chance to drive a car, but he wanted to be a driver. Mm -hmm. You deserve a chance to see if you can do that, if somebody will give you that opportunity. With Durant, can you imagine being possibly the best player on planet Earth and they'll never love you as much as this other dude right here? Mm. And everybody loves Steph, right? So if it comes down to a battle of like whose side we got, you're never going to win over Steph. And in fairness to Steph, I always say this, we don't let that man be a person. And so we act like, oh, Steph will have no problem with Kevin Durant being there. Yeah. You know it'll be easy. I assure you it was not. Right? That man's got an ego just like everybody else has an ego. So you on somebody else's team, you in somebody else's city, you the best player in the world, and nobody cares because it's his. And so he, I felt like Durant wanted something that was more his own, except the problem was he brought his fuck up homeboy with him. Mm -hmm. And it became his team. Because mm -hmm. when you're the one that messes everything up, it becomes your team because you're the one that we got to worry about all That's the right. time. Mm -hmm. And right. Kevin Durant's that dude, he's so cold that you never have to worry about him. And that gets old fast. That's right. That's right. It, uh, speaking of stuff, I, 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 I love talking sports with you, even though we talk about so many other stuff. And I asked Stephen A the same question. When you talk about generations, right? When you look at Steph and Braun over mm -hmm. the last 10, 15 years, objectively, who, who's, whose era really was it? Ooh, this is a this is a spicy one that I've been dealing with and trying to figure out myself. Because the truth is, Steph Curry won four championships on LeBron's watch. That's right, and beat Bron twice. Beat him twice, three and, times actually. Yes, three times. Three times. Yeah. There's, and there's no way around that. He mm -hmm. beat him on his watch while LeBron was still in his prime. That's right. Let's say the Warriors, and I don't think this is going to happen. But let's say the Warriors won a championship this year, mm -hmm. and that would mean that Steph had five championships. And LeBron has four. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can say LeBron's a better player than Steph. How could I say that the era did not belong to Steph? And right? Steph changed the game. He revolutionized the game of basketball in, in ways LeBron didn't. Everybody plays like Steph. Yeah, it's tricky, though. LeBron couldn't revolutionize it because you look at LeBron and you're like, oh, I can't do that. <laughs> right, like, like there's just no, it's just not an option, right? Like, like I can't, I can't, like there's no way that I could ever look in a mirror and be like, yeah, I got that. No, no, it's not happening. <laughs> you can feel like that about Steph shooting. Right, but that's the problem. People feel like that. They can't do that shit right. either. Yeah, like, yeah, I can't yeah, imagine yeah, yeah. coaching a youth league basketball team right now. <laughs> For years, I thought he was chucking. I was like, he has to be chucking. The way Yo, he was, them shots, it looked like he was chucking. Let me tell you, man. I was, that year that Steph killed the NCAA tournament, mm -hmm. I covered I was in the building for the first two rounds. And I even told him, cause it kind of like changed the trajectory of my life. Cause I was there and in between jobs and I was watching that. And I was like, no, I gotta be around this forever. Like it was that big a thing, but he was out there. He's like 145 pounds. The Jersey was falling off of him and dog, he was just demolishing. Like they played Gonzaga in the first round. They had a couple of NBA players. He's just doing it to him, playing, you know, just playing with regular old dudes who could get into Davidson, mm -hmm. right? Then they played Georgetown the next round. Georgetown was the number two seed. And Georgetown should have won that game, but that's a whole nother discussion. And Steph's doing all that. And you watch it and you're like, well, he can't do that in the NBA because he's just too small. Mm -hmm. That was all it is. And then you realize after they changed the rules in the NBA, actually he can do this in the NBA, right? So he's one of these dudes we question really just because of size. It was never a question of whether or not you had the talent or anything else. But man, if you put like a couple tattoos on that dude, we talk about him like he's Allen Iverson because mm. he's got handles like that. That's he's right. got, He had all of it. And at every turn, he's like, I'm better than y'all think. And we're like, but Steph, we think you're the greatest shooter ever. Could you really? No, no, he was better. Every year, I got to wind up coming on the microphone being like, guys, I swear I was saying that Steph was really good, but you were right. I did not say he was as good. I know the next time I see him, he going to have something to say to me because he finds out everything everybody says that is the little bittiest slight. And he going to say something to you. He ran up on one of my homeboys who covers the league because we had had a podcast discussion where I was trying to make the point He's a system player, but also the system. Mm -hmm. But all that got heard was he's a system player. This is years later. He walks up to my man. Not bad for a system player, huh? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't think cats understand. Uh, petty. <laughs> yeah, I don't think people that's quite, that pettiness. Yeah, I don't think people quite get what kind of dude he is. He just went to Christian schools. That's all it is. But like, <laughs> but otherwise, now nah, he like us. That it, statement makes all the sense in the world, though, because he is the system. Mm -hmm. So the system is built around him. 
what it is and the point we were trying to make is there's a lot of guys where you'd be like, yo, we need to win the game. Put four dudes at the bottom, you at the top, you go make it happen. Mm -hmm. He's not the first choice that I make to do that, which is different than guys that are typically that good. Ain't nobody try to hear nothing that came after that, though. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's shade, that's mm -hmm. shade. And then that boy went out there and won another championship. Yeah, another <laughs> I'm not like sleeping on him this year. Nah. I'm not, if they get in the playoffs, I, 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 I'm know. not sleeping on Golden State. Mm -hmm. Never know. They, they, that's the, Clay Thompson is not what Clay Thompson was, becomes the hold up. My thing with the Warriors is it's hard to play for now and play for later at the do, same time. Do you trade Clay if you have the opportunity? My thing is I trade them young dudes. Really? Wiseman, uh, Moody, or Kaminga. Really? If I could get Kevin Durant back, I'll trade them all. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, of course. If you get, yeah, yes. But I trade out like one or two. It's hard to have a bunch of dudes in their 30s and a bunch of dudes that's like 21 and like make your team yeah. happen at the same time. That's just me. Mm -hmm. I would get the young dudes out of there to try to win while I got Steph. And if I'm Steph, I go in there kicking and screaming about it. Is the NBA getting too violent now? It seems like the people are fighting more. They oh, argue too more. violent. I've always said it's not violent enough. Well, it's getting back to it. <laughs> it's getting back to the Detroit, New York Knicks days. Yes, and I love it. And the Lakers days. It. It's getting back there. You know why? Because good basketball doesn't make people watch. Passion makes people watch. Correct. Like, you think about that terrible basketball of the 90s or the late 2000s where you got finals games where a team is scoring in the 50s. But we view that more nostalgically than the game we watch now. We like watching dudes elbow each other. Right. We like watching dudes push each other around. Right. I said something on Game Theory. It was the first words of season one where I was like, you realize there's a whole generation of NBA fans that have never seen their favorite players in a fight. We have seen every single one of our favorite players every single fight one. somebody. Michael yes. Jordan, Mary Michael Bird, yeah. Magic Johnson, yep. yeah. all of them. All of them, top to bottom. She go, Charles kill Barkley, him there, you go, you go, go Kobe. Yep. All of them. Kobe. Oh, did we ever? Yeah, right, right. We got Rest peace. Peace. Yeah. 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 Did we ever? We had never seen any of these cats fight. So, like, that level, Damn. I'm down to see some pushing around. Like, one of my favorite altercations, Joel Embiid and Carl Anthony Towns had one because Carl Anthony Towns was like, look, I know the rest of y'all think I'm a sucker, but I'm not taking that from you. And finally decided he was going to fight him. Now, where I get worried, y'all see the story about John Morant and the laser beam? I yeah, I was going to get to that, yep. <sighs> Son, this is my only thing about that. Okay. Now, you from not too far away. South Carolina, from where right. he's from. He's from something, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what part of South Carolina that is, right? Like in terms of like country, country. what it's like on the ground. But like country, country, people don't understand that country got real also, right? That's right? I don't know how he rolls, how he gets down. But I know a lot about Memphis. And you can play this game with that laser dot on the team bus with the Pacers if you want to. And if you want to play these games with your NBA friends, go ahead. Watch your step in that city that you live in. That's real. And that's my thought about that. Like, mm -hmm. if you riding around with your partners and that's they get down and you still got these dudes around you, which makes me wonder what you and your daddy be talking about. He had every single game and you still riding around with dudes that's laser beam and strength. Like, mm -hmm. people, like, like, what exactly are you talking about? But I hope he's careful. I really hope. There was the other story. I don't know if you saw it. Somebody sued him. Um, basketball. Playing basketball at the house? <laughs> yeah, Adam, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. No, what happened? I was team job. Basically, some young man uh, that he's known forever was playing ball at his house, and they had some heated altercation, and the young man says he accidentally threw a ball that whizzed past Ja's head, and Ja looked around allegedly and said, should I do it to him? And they said yes, and they gave that boy the beats. Um, but he was like 17. Oh, wow. Now, that, that comes down to a philosophical question as to, like, how old uh, how old is old enough to get your ass kicked for acting like how a grown man? How big was that 17-year-old? Some of these 17-year-olds are pretty big, man. Right? <laughs> <Shut> up, man. <laughs> I think 17 was enough for me. Like, mm -hmm. at 17, I recognized a grown man might whoop my ass. Mm -hmm. But didn't they say the NBA did an investigation and found out they couldn't uh, confirm the, the laser star? Yeah, they, they, they couldn't confirm it. But, but uh, mm -hmm. here's, what I, here's what it sounded like they couldn't confirm. They couldn't confirm that the laser was tied to a gun. That's right. Which mm -hmm. is fair. And I think it's in all likelihood them boys are just playing around in the car mm -hmm. with a laser. Ray J had one this morning. Yeah, yeah Ray J had one earlier today. Like, had yeah, one we don't laser. play like that. No. Yeah, yeah. I think we all, like, nah, nah. maybe mm -hmm. I'm just from Texas. Mm -hmm. We don't play like mm -hmm. that. Shannon Sharp, what's your thoughts? I love Shannon. Arguing with uh, a couple people on, on the court. Because at one time, if you argue with somebody in the court like that, you're getting thrown out. Mm hmm. Not Shannon Shaw. I love Shannon, though. Shannon is one of my favorite people. I love people, him, too. I love him, too. you're not getting kicked out of the Staples Center, whatever they call it now, when you the number one LeBron James fan, right? Let's go there. <laughs> my, my favorite thing about that, though, Dylan Brooks, he was ready for that. Dylan Brooks didn't want that. I think it was Desmond Bain was the other dude that came over there. Desmond Bain didn't really want that either. Steven Adams. Oh, 
suddenly we have a fair fight. That's a good one. <laughs> right. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Because Stephen Adams feels no pain. Yeah. He's impervious to pay. Like, like he had to reach on Shannon to other dudes. Woo, woo, woo. Shannon Sharp would have beat the dog shit out of him. <laughs> That's a good one. Listen, you know, uh, before you go, um, oh, man, I was talking about uh, game theory, right? You do game theory by yourself, but talking about Shannon. When you see these heated altercations that Shannon and Skip Bayless get into, or you even saw Stephen A. and Jay get into yesterday, Jay Williams, is that just something that comes with the territory? It kind of depends on the dynamic that you have with your co-host. But yeah, that can, I mean, you think about it, man. Them dudes is up there hollering at each other for two and a half hours a day, <laughs> right? Like y'all in here kicking it, right? Like like the nature of your show is not antagonistic, word, right? Word. Y'all, are just, they, they go at it. And with the ego that Skip has, and I know Skip, I know, like I don't know them like real close, but I know them well enough to talk about it in this context. Mm-hmm. And what happened was, like, I saw in that one with, with uh, Shannon and Skip, and I may be out of turn because I don't work at that network, but Shannon didn't have to say, you could have took down the tweet. No, 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 just let that go, just let that go. And Skip didn't have to be like, I'm not going to take it down and let me explain why. And then whatever they old fight was happened right in front of each other. Right. Yeah. And what I've said, and I hope for them is, this, this TV thing, that back and forth, only works if the people think you like each other. Like, if they know you don't like each other or feel like you don't like each other, it doesn't go. Kornheiser and Wilbon scream at each other. And they be heated at each other sometimes, but always at the end as a reminder mm-hmm. that they like each other. Stephen A. and Jay got a little bit of a different dynamic because it ain't their show. It's his show. Mm-hmm. And the last thing I saw on there, and I haven't talked to either one of them about this, but Jay did something that would have got me right there with Stephen A. With Stephen A. is like, yo, you always tell me what you find interesting. Why don't you just say what you mean? Like, no, 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 we're not doing passive aggressive about mm-hmm. this. Like, Stephen A. Smith is not a person that's here for your tiptoe. He's right here. Say what it is yeah, 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 that yeah. you think. But on this issue, they've gotten in these arguments. I was trying to YouTube the full segment, and I found another one of them <laughs> hollering at each other about Kyrie Irving, right? Like, it's that one is particular and in ways seems personal to both of them for different mm-hmm. ways. Stephen A, he got contacts with those people over there and talking to them. And every now and then it'll be like, yo, I don't care about you or your daddy. So like, it's clear they got their thing. Jay Williams went to Duke. Jay Williams is from that New Jersey private school basketball world. Mm-hmm. So they both bring in whatever their things are mm-hmm. into this, but they got shows where people just like argue with each other. None of the shows I've been on, Dan ain't built for that. Me and him couldn't holler at each other yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Oh God, if I hollered at Pablo like that on television, they send me to jail. Mm-hmm. Like it's just, you know, like it's not, or, or, or at least I get detention. Like, like it's not, the dynamic did not allow. They would say, they would say stop Asian hate, all kinds yeah, of stuff yeah, they'd be saying here. No, but, but our dynamic and our interaction didn't work that way. Skip and Shannon, when they're on good terms, they can do it, but no, nah, that's the thing. When you got that, we holler at each other television show, and sometime it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna be games. Right. So how do you navigate that hosting Remember your own Bumani show? Gotta go too. Oh yeah, you, oh yeah, yeah, no, we go, we good with this. I'm rolling. How do you navigate that hosting your own show? Oh, I ain't got to argue with nobody no more. Yeah, but I'm talking about you know we know people like to see some type of conflict. Yeah. Do you feel the need to like stir something? Up? No, because I can't. The kind of conflict that we talking about here, like, I feel honest saying this, and I don't think anybody's gonna look at me for being a jerk for it, right? Would you want to argue with me on television? No. Would you? Mm-hmm. No, but like. I wouldn't want to argue with me. I can have a conversation. Yeah, we have a conversation. But like, yo, I'm going to bring it to you right now. Most people aren't. That's not a winning proposition for most people. So You can't approach somebody like Bomani emotionally. You're going to lose every time. But then I can't approach them emotionally because then I just look like a bully. Mm -hmm. Right? I don't Mm -hmm. look like. like like, It works better. Like if you saw the thing I had with Jake Paul the other day with that Mm -hmm. back and forth. I knew going in, if Jake Paul tried me, I'm going to just let him do it. Let's keep going. Okay. Okay, like I'm a video game boss when it comes to arguing stuff. Like, I don't have to prove anything to those people, Mm -hmm. so I can just lay back and go with it. What I find works better for me, like with my podcast, people like to hear me talk to my friends. Like, they don't want to hear me in conflict. They want to hear me chilling because that, to them, is like the refreshing part of it. It's like, yo, Bomani's actually just like one of our friends. We can just hang out and talk about this stuff. But other people, I get why they feel like they got to, and I'm not saying that the people we talked about are manufacturing conflict, but I know why a lot of people feel like they have to manufacture conflict, but I can just make people mad getting out of bed. Like, I ain't really got to <laughs> try hard to, to get them to that place. Gotcha. Right. Well, we appreciate you for stopping through, brother. Oh, no, man. Season two game theory. What's the What's the days again? Is it still Sunday? Oh no, we on Friday now. Fridays right, okay. eleven Eastern on HBO and HBO Max. We on right after Real Time with Bill Maher. Oh, and good this week. In. 
I believe our in studio guest is Gilbert Arenas. Okay. Ooh. Yes, this should uh this should be interesting. Absolutely. This is the rare time where I'm like, what in the world am I gonna do with this interview? I have no <laughs> like this this could go any direction. So we got that, getting ready for the Super Bowl. Yeah, but good 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 conversation though. You know, one one thing other thing I want to ask you, people will look at you and they see you on HBO and they think, man. Who, some people might think Bomani came out of nowhere, but they don't realize you've had a long broadcast career. That's the debate I was just having in here Behind the earlier scenes, yeah. because I'm like, you know, th there's no point of entry to to podcast. Or I have no idea how you do it anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like I was I was talking to Jamel about this yeah. yesterday, where she was like, if somebody young came and asked you how you get in the game, what would you tell them? And I would tell them, I don't know. Yeah, turn your computer on, because because I, I I feel like you haven't skipped any steps. Mm -mm. Being that you haven't skipped any steps, you have the skill set to sustain where you are. I feel like yeah. with these new people, they just turn on the microphones, start their podcast, and they haven't acquired any skills because no. they're skipping steps and i don't know where you get them right like i don't mm -hmm. know if there's podcast school right like i don't know if you know <laughs> but like, like if the colleges or whatever are like teaching people how to get in and yeah. do this but like i remember when i first got in the game i got in writing and i did skip steps but i was working with editors and people who were making me better and then mm -hmm. gradually like there were things we figured out and we got to the place where it was like oh, okay cool this is where i am but now with the podcast game when i talk to people and they ask me like, what can they do to get on? They never asking me how to make their work better. That's right. They're like, hey, so what can I do with my Twitter or my TikTok? That's to, right. You know, to get people to see it. And I'm like, look. And what network can I sign to? Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, exposure gets you exposed. Like if your work is not Ooh. ready to be seen, That's right. you don't want, this is what we were just talking about coming in here just a little bit earlier. Like, hey man, people gonna give you one shot. Like if what you got ain't there, you don't want to put that before the world. So you need to do whatever it takes to make your work better and then hope that the people who listen to you will share. Like Chuck D said something, this is like 10 years ago online, I'll never forget. And his point was, if you have a, a band or a rap group, whatever it is, and you got a Facebook fan page and that Facebook fan page has 10 fans, your fan page needs to serve those 10 fans. They're all like corporate thinking is I'm gonna serve all these people who ain't there. Mm -hmm. Serve those 10 people. And then those 10 people will tell somebody else mm -hmm. about it. And now your 10 might turn to 12 and then your 12 might turn to 14 or whatever it is. But what they could do is get you a, your own little audience and serve it and get better and get better. That's and right. then from there, somebody might notice you, but even like it was 10, 12 years ago, like I got on TV via Twitter, right? I got the attention of people who made decisions, mm -hmm. sending tweets. Twitter's so overcrowded and nobody does anything productive there. I don't even know if you can impress anybody on Twitter anymore That's right. to get on. Mm -hmm. So like, if you want to do this, you better love it. Cause since everybody else is doing it, it ain't gonna be no money out there for you very long exactly. either. Exactly. Nah, this is a tough game right now. That's right. Expose, you'll get you exposed. That's right. Like Bo that. Jones. That's right. Watch season two of Game Theory, man. Just Friday, right after Bill Maher. That's on right. HBO. It's the Breakfast Club.